Do you want or need to control who can be a member of your Google Groups in Google Workspace? There are some scenarios where you don't want to allow everyone into a specific group or you don't want to allow a specific object type such as a user account, a group, or even a service account into a specific group. This is a very normal requirement and need, especially when you talk about data access and control. Google Workspace is constantly evolving and as part of the features that it has, there is the group membership restriction. Now just before I start on this, please don't forget to like the video to help other people who would like to learn more about the group membership restriction to find this video quickly and also to help me grow the channel as well. So what is the membership restrictions? Well, basically it's a filtering feature that you can enable and apply on your Google Groups in Google Workspace Admin Console so that you can restrict the internal groups and make sure that only the required accounts or the intended accounts or object types are members in this group. And it's done on the single group level, so you have to do it on every group that you want to apply this. Now you can also use this setting to let certain members from external organizations join one of your organization's groups and I will be showing you in the demo how you can do this. Now this was announced as an open beta in October 2021 and it has been made generally available on 15th of December in the same year. Since then it is visible for every user who has the feature available for them who are the Google Workspace Enterprise Edition admins and Enterprise Edition accounts. So obviously as the name dictate, there are many use cases for this. And for example, you want to have a group where you only want to specifically add users to that group and you don't want to add other groups. So a group that only has users as members with non-state groups. The other way around goes if, for example, you have a group that you only want to add groups inside it so that you don't want to add service accounts or user accounts into that group. And if you have a highly privileged group and you only want to restrict your own users, your own domain users to be members of this group, then you can also apply the restriction to this and no external users or objects can be added into that group later on. And as you'll see in the demo now, you'll be able to configure conditions and restrictions from the group settings for an existing group, or this will be a step that you can do while you're creating a new group if the group does not exist before. And the actual filters and restrictions that you will create are just queries, and you, you'll see how simple they are and how clear they are. Some of these queries are editable and you can replace the default value with a custom value. This is the case with the customer ID condition. And basically if you leave it to the default, it will read your own customer ID. And just to give you an idea about what is customer ID, it's a unique code or a unique ID that Google gives to every Google Workspace account that is created. And by account, I mean by an, an a tenant. So you have your own Google Workspace tenant that holds multiple domains and subdomains. This whole tenant is given a unique ID by Google, which is called the customer ID. And the default value for this, once you create it, is going to be your own customer ID as mentioned, but then you will have the option to modify it to mention other domains, customer IDs, effectively whitelisting this group to those additional whitelisted domains and accounts. And you can have a combination of conditions such as AND or OR conditions, or you can group them. So it's a very flexible way of creating these conditions. Now, just before going to the admin console and see a quick demo on this, there are a few considerations that I want to highlight for you here. First of them is removing the restrictions from an nested child group makes the parent group non-compliant. And this is something that links to the second point which is you can only directly add a compliant group or member however after someone adds a group or a member it can later become non-compliant basically it says that 
when you have a group with restrictions, then you can only add another similar restricted group or member into this group. But later on, after you add this compliant member, this compliant member can be changed and become non-compliant, which leads to the second or the third point, which is the parent group has non-compliant child groups nested inside it, the parent can still be compliant and this is specific for the nested groups inside a parent group. So if you remove the conditions from a child group or a nested group, this nested group becomes non-compliant. The main group can still be compliant and can still show the status of compliant in the status and in the information. So these are the three important considerations for you. Now let me take you to the admin console. Let me show you five scenarios here. The first one is I will just create a new group and I'm going to add a restriction for it to cover the customer ID. And then I will try to add an external user for this. Basically, I will add a restriction to only limit it to objects inside my domain. So I will go to groups and in the groups, I will click create a new group. And in the name, I'm just going to type something for me to know later on, which is this is the most creative thing that I came up with. <laughs> so I will click next. And I'm just going to keep these settings as they are because I don't really care about them. The only setting that I want to change is at the bottom, which is allow members outside of your organization so that I can demonstrate how the group will be restricted now. And then I'm going next. So this is the membership restriction and by default it shows no restrictions but I want to add a restriction to restrict the customer ID or based on the customer ID and these are the conditions and the equals the operator is equals of course and the value here is you only have the customer ID which is the default one and this is your own accounts customer ID if you change this to anything else such as whatever value here then if the value of the member customer ID does not match this, you cannot add it to the group. So let me type undo. And as you can see, I was able to modify this because this value is modifiable and this field is modifiable. And these are some examples of queries also that you can have. You can validate the query here, which is valid anyways, because it's automatically generated. And then I will click create group. So this has effectively created the group for me. And now when I want to add members to this group, I will go to add members and let me add my own Gmail account. And it found the account. So I'll click add to group. And you see that I cannot add this member because it is violating the group membership restrictions. It does not satisfy the group's member restriction. So it's an external account and it cannot be added. When I add any other member, let's say I can add myself. And when I click add to group, you will see the account is added to the group without any issues. So this is the first one and this is the most basic and most important one if you want to apply it that you prevent any external member from being added to the group. The second scenario, I'm going to modify this same group so I will go back to the group settings, which is probably the security settings here. And when I go to the restrictions, and first of all, you see the status as compliant. And I can add another condition here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep this one as the first one. I'm going to add an or condition where I will choose the member type to be equals to user. So let me add this to another group so that I can create a more complex condition. So when I click add to new condition group, you see I've got two groups now. So this is the first segment of the condition, which is the customer ID equals customer ID. But what I want to do is I want to make this condition and these two next conditions. So I have to change this field to and so this will apply and then it will take whatever value of this and it will apply it in the condition. I need to delete this one because it's no longer required. So now the first one is member type equals user. The second condition or the second option, it's or in here. 
so the member type equals group if you take a look at the condition here you will find it it's very simple to understand now so this is the first segment which is the first line here second segment is this one member type equals one which is user or member type equals three which is group now what's going to happen here is I will be able to add only groups or users into this group if I add a service account I won't be able to do this so and in any ways I won't be able to add service accounts because it is restricted to only the local or the uh, the domain users or the account users so now that I have this condition set and that I have a user in this group and as you can see the status is compliant let me actually remove the membership type from this and let me remove the user membership type so I'll click the X here so now it's the customer ID equals group customer ID and membership equals three which is only groups and because I already have a user in this group you will see that the group is it's now it's showing as evaluating but after a moment it will show as non-compliant and if I go back to the group settings and if I try to refresh so you should see that the issue with the compliance is it's not compliant so you'll see that forward compliant means that any new modifications on this group will require you to be compliant and satisfy the restrictions that are added however it contains present objects or current objects that are not compliant so if I go back to the list of members you will see that this member or this user it's causing the group to be non-compliant and if I remove it it's going to be compliant now so if I go to security settings and if I refresh you will see the status switched immediately to compliant now the next scenario that I want to show you here what if you wanted to add a group inside this one however you did not restrict that group yet so this group has restrictions but if I go to add members and a moment ago I have seen a group called sysadmins so if I add the sysadmins to the group you will see I cannot add it because it tells me that the group it, it does not have any restrictions or it is not as strict as the parent group which is very important condition to satisfy here so if I click OK and if I find that sysadmins group as you can see it does not have any restrictions it has one direct member but right now I'm not going to view the member so I'll go to security settings I'm going to add a membership restriction I'm going to do it as the member type which is equals to groups and that's it I'm going to save the setting now if I go to the members you will see it contains a specific user so when I go back to the other one to the original group and if I go to members and if I try to add the sysadmins again you'll still see that I cannot add it because it's still not restricted or it's still not compliant with the restrictions of this group so going back to that group I will remove this member from this group and also I will go to security settings and I will add another condition which is and to make it similar to the initial restriction that is on the other group so this is the restriction that I have clicking save going back to the restrictions group then going to members and now I can add the sysadmins sys group as you can see it has been added normally here and going back to the group view you see it's compliant but then if I change the restrictions on that sysadmin group so if I go to sysadmins and if I just remove the restriction here and if I start to randomly add people in this group so going to members and let add, let's add myself and let's add another user so whatever 
you can see I can add those users to the group normally. But now if I go back to the restrictions group, you see it's, it's non-compliant because it contains a non-compliant member, which is the sysadmins group. So now I should remove this group or I should restrict the group again so that it meets the restriction requirements. So that's it for this video. I hope that I did explain the concept easily and help you to learn something new today. And also now you'll be able to effectively manage your group's memberships and restrict who should be in what group. And hopefully this will help you get started with the group membership restriction if you have it enabled for your Google Workspace account. If you have any question or if you have any comment about this video or any of the contents, please don't hesitate to put it in the comments section. And also please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to get more content and click that bell button so that you are notified whenever I post any new video. Also if you're looking for a more Google Workspace related content, then you may be interested in my full and comprehensive Google Workspace admin course. It covers a lot of topics such as users and groups management, device management, Google Vault and data security and compliance as well. You can get it from the link below in the video description at a discounted price. And once you do that, you will also get lifetime access with constant updates and new content as they are released from Google. Thanks once more for watching and stay safe wherever you are.